<laughs> uh, but to me, it's like some people like, you know, they like to have a bag of chips. My sister tells me there's a thousand toxins in a bag of chips. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then there's people, they, they, they don't mind eating too much, and no one really has a go at them. They say, come on, maybe you shouldn't eat so much, but they don't, they're not on their case. <laughs> Whereas if you have a cigarette, they will be on your case. You know, if you're seeing smoking, maybe these people are going to be. Whoa, you want to give that up? But you don't go up to the man with the chips and he's got a bit of a belly. He's, got, he's, not, he's liable for diabetes type 2. He'll die 10 years early too. You know? Let's be straight. Talking about this, oh, your, your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, so I've just brought that up because that is just another, in, in its cultural things, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, so I, uh, there we go. Uh, and then some of my more off key, you know, off key moments as I've worked well in God's grace I've been able to do, uh, you know, achieve a lot and I, I give all thanks to him because you can see I'm a quite a flawed person <laughs> but um, I, have been, I have been it's been, been wonderful I, I thank God for my conv criminal convictions because it made me think that only Christians would employ me so I wound up working for Christians and I really begrudged them it because they, they gave me nine grand a year for the first two years and I thought this was I thought they were taking the mick and the robbery but, uh, <laughs> But now I'm really thankful for it because I, I just, it's just fantastic. We can be involved in discipling, making disciples of all nations, you know, for the king that's one day going to rule this world. And there's no, I'm convinced there's no higher king, no, no greater army. You could, the SAS isn't nearly like being serving the king of kings. You're in the elite unit of, of all time and history um, before whom emperors will bow and all kings of all time. Uh, so it's just a, it's such a privilege. But yeah, I've done things like Last Christmas, I got, I, I, I vowed not to install computer games on my computer, which I use for the video editing for this. And I, you know, it's dangerous, Thomas, you know they're dangerous. I, I put a computer game on, and I was playing it till 4 a.m. for weeks, about a month. So I wrote, you know, I wrote that off, but maybe there's a time for rest. I like, I like it in the Bible. You know, the first three years of my Christian life, I, di I didn't take any holidays. I just went on camps because I thought, yeah, the times are evil. People need to know this message. Just do it. And then as you read the Bible more, one, you get a bit burnt out and fried. But two, read the Bible and like, what, every seven years, they're meant to take a whole year off. So that God, you know, God, it built into the system, the idea of rest, that you need a break sometimes. And um, so maybe that was that. It was a bit, I know it was OTT and I was, you know, obsessive and not good. But, um, but there, there it is. That's, that's me. Um, Yeah, I could talk about other things like singleness, sex, struggling with content, contentment, these, these sort of issues. And oh, I want to do these things. I can't be married. Oh, I want to be married. And oh, no. and in the same month, you might go through these emotions heavily and and, and, and get distracted and and and, uh, and and your your weakness and your flawness exposed through that because it's so fundamental to who we are as people. And I, and I read that in the, as you read in the Bible, you see that yeah, He made us male and female. It's a fundamental part of who we are. As, and our human identity made in the image of God, uh, the, the two become one. So it is, it, that's why, it explains why it's such a big problem and big issue for people. Um, but then there's this wonderful picture, oh yeah, of a marriage with God, that there can be this unity with, with Christ, with God himself. So, but there have been struggles with that. I was going to talk about that a bit, but I won't bother. Uh, we're running out of time, I think. I'm going to be short. So, um, and one of the things I love, I've loved staying in touch with my, my, my friends, my old friends, because when I became a Christian, I had no friends, but um, I met some people I, I met in, inside, or one friend inside, and uh, some of my old acquaintances, I, I've stayed in touch with them, and I enjoy their company, and I, I, love, I love them, and I love spending time with them. Um, and sometimes I, start, I stumble and trip there, but over time, hopefully God gives me strength, and I feel it. It's right to to stay, to stay with to to keep doing it, even if I do sometimes stumble. Just to be, I, I really pray to be careful because I want them to be in heaven. I want them to hear more about this message, and I want to be around if they've got questions, if they've got things to to say. Um, and therefore, yeah, and I'll just thank God that sometimes he sometimes he just does to open the door wide. They meet people, and then they come to you with these questions, and and they just you just it's like yeah, it, it was right to st to stay around them and to to be a friend, you know. Uh, to be to be a, a human, uh, not you know, because no, sometimes they can be the church thing. No, leave everything behind. Become a church robot. Uh, do do this sort of thing to it, caricature it. But there, there can be that danger. You could be um, be frank. Uh, I found um, right reasons. I'm still in the faith. I'm still a Christian. 
he spotted this one, I think it's true. I, I've had a man, a, an old, one of these old friends was we were driving along and he said, Thomas, come on, let's go get a bag of pure MDMA. You know, a big bag and do it together. I'm like, sounds like a good idea. Because we'd had a beer, <laughs> it sounds like a good idea. But, you know what, you've got to, you've got to convince me. Because I'm not too many beers, man, just, just like the, the one. But we, you know, we were relaxed. I said, it sounds like a good idea, but you've got to convince me that my man Jesus Christ doesn't ultimately deliver the real thing. You see, that you'll come down on after eight hours, so it's really not all that. Um, but my man, you, if you can convince me that it's not true, that Jesus Christ didn't rise from the dead, that the things he promises are not real, um, then, then I'll be convinced. But I personally believe that my man has got the real ecstasy in his little bag, and I want to go to him to get it. Um, and he, of course, he couldn't, what could he say? <laughs> he, doesn't, he couldn't convince me, because he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he hasn't looked into it. But we do have discussions with some boys who have looked into it, but they still haven't convinced me. So, and I, 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 yeah, I hope to do some more on this, but I suggest you read it. A lot of the people I think that don't think it's true, I think they just haven't, you haven't read the Bible. If you read the Bible from beginning to end, it's, it's very powerful. Um, and and the, it was written so that you can know if it's true. People say, oh, I wish I had your faith. John said in that passage we read, or a little after it, he said, these things, well, there were many things Jesus did, but these things were written so that you may believe in Jesus, the Son of God, and believing, have eternal life. So if you want this faith, I would suggest a really good place to start is to, you know, re read the Bible, and people d don't do it often. But having read it, and having looked at it a lot of times, and looked at other things, I'm, I'm just so convinced that the Bible's true. It just stands up in my mind to every question. I'm gonna just give you one example, one that you could do this on a thousand different places. For me, the mercy, the mercy and justice construct, as I call it, <laughs> which is like about the cross. How can you give mercy and how can you keep justice? So, um, there has been a murder. Um, a young man is murdered. The mother cries out for, please give me justice, I need justice. How can she have a hope of justice? And the murderer, the person who killed the man, how can he have a hope of ultimate redemption? Um, if, he's, uh, you know, if he's truly penitent and broken, can he ever have a hope of redemption? How can the hopes of both people be met? Because both are surely right. And I don't see that how they're met in any other system than the man that Jesus, God, can say to the woman, he said, I have heard your cry for justice and I take it seriously. You lost a child and you lost him forever. I haven't just ignored it. I, I myself have taken on the consequence and the punishment for that uh, in my son Jesus Christ on the cross. Uh, and justice is satisfied, but it is possible to give mercy. I, 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 he, he changed, he turned around and, and, and asked for mercy. And I gave him mercy and, and took, the just, took the punishment myself. And there's just no other system like that. Um, that's just what one different thing in you, uh, yeah. Um, he's always there. He's always there for me. I know, I know, see people, people might, you know, church, like you said, church can reject you, different, other different things you do, but I, I, I wonderfully, I know that um, my God's right by me, he lives in me, he hasn't ever left me, and he'll still stay by me, and I know that the man I am today is not the man I will be tomorrow, uh, or next year, that God will keep changing me, and it, it says I'm not, a guy once said, I'm not the man I, I, I want to be. I'm not the man I ought to be. I'm not the man I, I, I could be. But thank God, I'm, I'm, I'm not the man I once was. I'm not the man I'm going to be. Um, so, and that I know. That I, know I just know that. Uh, I know he's changed me. And I know that, that heaven is real. And I'm, he's going to present me faultless one day. I'm going to be like, he says we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And who, want, who doesn't want to be faultless? Uh, it would be fantastic to have no pride, no anger, none of those things, you, you know, the inappropriate anger and stuff like that. It would be wonderful. And, and he's put a joy in my heart, you know. I, you, you, I, I'm going to be driving a long drive down south after this. Um, and uh, I know I'm going to be singing in that car because uh, my God is good. And he rules the skies. It's fantastic, that song. He's like, face like burning, uh, like lightning and like, uh, eyes like flames of fire. Our God is, he's heavy duty. If you had a boss like that, you'd be walking around, yes, what, <laughs> and what, oh God, he's some serious God, he's a, pr you know, he's dangerous, he's, and he's, he's amazing, he's just, he's got, it's so colourful as well, it's just, rain, there's a rainbow around his head, like an emerald, in appearance as well, like an emerald, and he's just like, yes, 
the person I know, he's just, he's worth knowing. He gives me joy to know him. Um, and he's never left me. Though I've left him many times. And, and I was reminded of another verse by a friend who said, yeah, that, that Proverbs 24 thing where, where it says, um, a righteous man may stumble seven times, but he will rise again. Um, it's not. It's not over when I keep when I fall when I when I make mistakes. It's not over when you fall when you make mistakes, uh, but you can get up again. And the, and the spirit of Christ in the person means I will get up, even though I might not think it. But I know I will. I will end up getting up because the spirit of the living God that raised him from the dead and put him high above all things uh, is a, that same spirit that work in in those who believe and put their trust in him. So I will. I'll, I'll rise up and follow him. Um, as a fool stumbles once and gives up and, and is broken and lost in, in, in his calamity, he doesn't try and rise. Um, yeah. Thank you.